Conquering a climb is great, but after you've done it once, if you're anything like us, you'll probably want to go up it again, but faster. So how do you go about improving your time? Well, a lot of it is going to come down to plain old fitness and power, but there are a few tricks that you can use. So coming up are GCN's tips on how to set a PB up a climb. It's going to hurt, isn't it, mate? Yeah. First up, you need to work out how long the climb is going to take you, because that is going to have the biggest effect on just how you tackle it. That's right. So for longish climbs, i.e. anything that's around about five minutes or more, pacing is going to be vital. Go into the red at the start, and you're likely to lose any time gained in the first half over the second half. And in this situation, a steady power throughout is normally ideal unless there's a variable gradient. So if, for example, your climb starts and finishes with a steeper section, then actually the fastest way to go up it is to go into the red a little bit at the beginning, not too much, but just enough so that you can keep your speed up before backing off ever so slightly on the flatter middle section, but keeping just enough in the tank so you can get out of the saddle and sprint up that final steep bit. I said, get out of the saddle and sprint up the final steep bit. Well, I made good effort. How's that? Oh, that is brutal, that climb. Yeah. I went into the red at the start a bit. Good lad, yeah. And then uh, I slackened off on the flat section. Perfect. And then I had nothing left at the end at the top. Ah. Oh. Yeah. I hate to that break it to you, the, the top's actually just up there. Oh, I'm not doing that again. For short climbs, on the other hand, so ones of about three minutes or so, you can afford to start hard and then just try and hold the power as best you can. Now, a really important point to consider is your momentum. So not just on the climb itself, but actually the speed that you carry into the climb will have a huge impact on your time up it, even with the same overall power. To prove this, we are going to do an experiment. The climb we're on is around about 40 seconds in duration, and we're going to do two runs each at the same power. Simon with his almost superhuman power, although not quite as good as the pros, and then me as more of a real world example. The first time up, we're going to start from around 10 k's per hour, completely fresh, and then the second time, we are going to carry as much speed into the climb as possible, and then compare the two times at the top. Results are in. Uh, the second run I actually did seven watts less, so 580 versus 587. But with my momentum, I took four seconds off the time. So 42 the first time, 38 seconds the second time. Coincidentally, I was also four seconds faster with momentum. What time did you do? 37 seconds. Ah. Uh... Sorry, mate. Yeah. Uh, well, that does go to show that it is quite a significant advantage because although it doesn't sound like much, four seconds, that is 10% of that time on that climb. Yeah, and even if the climb was longer, you've still already saved four seconds for no extra effort in the initial part of the climb. How much difference then does wind make? Well, probably more than you think. It's very easy to assume that gravity is your only enemy when it comes to climbing. But actually, that's not the case. No, here is an example, in fact, that we've come up with using an online bike calculator. So, a 70 kilo rider riding at 250 watts on a four kilometer long steady climb of 6% will take 15 minutes and 30 seconds with no wind. So that's an average speed of just under 17 kilometers per hour. If there is then a headwind of just 10 kilometers per hour, that time increased to 17 minutes and eight seconds, more than a minute and a half's difference. On the other hand, with a 20 kilometer an hour tailwind, which we would all love to have, I'm sure, the same rider on the same climb 
would post a time of 14 minutes and 15 seconds, which is a full minute and 15 seconds faster than even the still day. So, as if you didn't need telling, wind makes a big, big difference. So if you want to go for that PV, make sure you check the weather forecast and time your attempt right. With that in mind then, it almost goes without saying that you should also think about your position on the bike even when it comes to climbing. So if we go back onto our online bike calculator with our same example rider riding at 260 watts on that same four kilometre climb, you will apparently save 20 seconds by riding down here on the drops versus up here on the tops. And that differential will increase significantly if you're dealing with a headwind. Now there are of course comfort and breathing issues that you can throw into the equation here. But if you are comfortable getting aero on a climb, it will be faster for the same power. Make sure you attempt your PB at the right time of day because a team of scientists from Birmingham University in the UK actually showed that performance in athletes could vary by as much as 26% depending on the time of day. Yeah, that's 26%. What is the right time of day though? Well, it depends on your own body clock. So if you naturally rise early and then early to bed, you'd be as well to attempt your PB at around midday, whereas night owls peak at around 8pm. How much difference then does it make to be behind another rider on a climb? I mean, we see the professionals doing this at the Tour de France, for example, all the time, but does it make a difference for us mere mortals and the slower speeds that we are doing? I think it's time, Si, for another experiment. Another one? Another experiment. Two experiments in one video. Whoa. Okay, this time we're gonna ride up the beautiful climb of Cheddar Gorge three times. The first one, Dan and I are gonna be side by side. Then the second one, I'm gonna ride on the front, but at the same power, that we've just done with Dan on my wheel. Then the final time, Dan and I will swap round and then we'll be able to compare the results. Just how much energy will we have saved by slipstreaming on a climb? Should you do it? Yeah. Three times. Right, three, two, three, two, one, go, go. And three, two, one, boom. Woo. Okay, you ready? Oh yeah. I did 304 watts when I was next to you the first time up. Then when I sat behind you, I did 286 for a total saving of 18 watts. Yeah, okay, so I did 311 on the front and then I did 295 on your wheel. So that's a saving of 16 watts. A bit less. A little bit less, I think because you're skinnier than me, so uh, I didn't get much shelter. Uh, well, we should also point out that we did have a slight tailwind up the climb for all of our efforts today. So presumably if we had no wind or a headwind, that difference would be even greater. Right then, so if you want to set a new PB on a climb, you could get fitter yeah. or lose weight, yeah. or you could cheat as yeah. we have proven today. So think about pacing. Uh, do it when you've got a tailwind, do it in the evening. Make sure you get air on the bike and perhaps do it behind somebody else as well. That's right. We expect you all to be smashing PVs out of the park yeah, now. Combine all them. That's right. Do make sure you subscribe to GCN as well. To do that, it's very simple. Just click on the globe. And if you want more content now, then why not click just up there for tips on how to get more aero. Or in the other corner, you could find out how much difference it makes to lose some body weight when you're climbing.